More details have emerged regarding the death of Wyndham Rotunda. According to police records obtained by TMZ, Rotunda had experienced heart complications in the weeks prior to his death. His family members told police he had COVID back in March and developed heart complications, causing him to have a, quote, weak lower part of his heart. Hospitalized one week prior to his death due to a heart issue, had a follow-up appointment with his doctor the morning that he died. He told his fiancée he was going to take a nap on Thursday, the day of his death, according to the police report. Offerman became concerned when his alarm went off an hour without stopping. Rotunda was discovered in his bed, not breathing, turning blue. Offerman called 911 as her mother attempted CPR, but Rotunda was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Report said Rotunda was advised by doctors to wear an external heart defibrillator, a device that is designed to treat people who experience sudden cardiac arrest. The defibrillator was later found inside Rotunda's vehicle parked in the driveway. So that's the that's the update from TMZ, which is, uh, man, I don't know. Because all we heard prior to uh, his passing was that, man, he's doing great. He's doing a lot better. Should be back soon. Even his father said that he expected him to be back soon. And then he passes away, and we're told that he had an external heart defibrillator that he had to wear. So I don't know what's going on, but a terrible story. And uh, all the best to his friends and family. There were uh, video packages on, on... I have not seen SmackDown yet. I don't know if I will. But Raw and NXT both had video packages. Heart-wrenching. They had uh, video packages for Terry Funk as well. But those were more of the, uh, you know, the... Uh, video packages they would do video for like tributes, somebody yeah. that's going to go to the hall of fame you know they got the guy that goes terry funk was a their live shriver yeah but uh the bray white one was i mean man that one was tough man and it was well done really well done on i mean really short notice too just unbelievable work and what is and i don't know if you had talked about this on another show or not it's even more heartbreaking when you go back to him initially being pulled off the road and then you had a, a long stretch of time where there were rumors that he had gotten COVID, but i i certainly didn't know that for sure i don't think anybody really if they did they weren't openly saying that he had gotten COVID. then there was a large stretch of time where they started going through releases and then i i, I believe it was you on this show that brought up the fact that there is something that is preventing him from being cleared but then that was never said and then he ends up getting brought back and it's like okay was this because of the cuts with vince and triple h and bringing guys back that he liked well, okay great he's, he's back now and then this happened and just to think about those pieces now forming back together again it's just it's terrible it's absolutely terrible and it shows you that just Again, one thing can lead to another, and how much it weakened an incredibly, you know, healthy guy. I it just is. It's so tragic for everybody involved. I will say that uh, we'll probably never have all the answers, but uh, the one question that I've never had answered to my satisfaction is why, when he had his first heart issue, did they fire him? Because you know the thing in WWE forever was we don't fire anybody when they're injured. I'm talking like an injury, you know, you, you have whatever. And, you know, at worst, you would think, okay, well, you can't wrestle. We'll pay you through the end of your contract. But uh, it, was, it was very odd that he ended up being fired. And don't know why, don't know what happened, yeah. but... Uh, Especially in hindsight, knowing the circumstances now and knowing what the timeline was, you know, what, what was it about or was it... I don't I don't know and I don't want to speculate any further on you know what what it possibly could have been but I'm glad it, obviously now even more in hindsight that I know he was looking to do Wyndham six things and then he ends up coming back into the fold thankfully he was able to come back into the fold I think because obviously you know he was able to make more money there and put away more for his family than doing almost anything else he you know out there a couple of ratings notes the smackdown with the Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk Tributes, 2.647 million viewers, so it was up a ton for that show. And then uh, the Collision Show on Saturday, 552,000, which was up 15%. This was a taped show. So again, it doesn't matter how many times we note that you know live versus taped, it doesn't matter. People always, to this day, believe it matters, and it never does. 
but they did a very, very good number for a taped episode. And then uh, Raw on Monday, 1.68 million, 0.51, 18 to 49. And uh, still lower than the show had been doing without football competition. 1.74 million, 1.73 million. And uh, third hour with Becky and Zoe did uh, 1.57 million. So uh, that's not a, a fabulous number for that. We've got uh, the show they have coming up on... Oh, here we go. Here we go. No. Not going to happen. Do it. Oh, He's going to. Not going to. He's going to sneeze. Not going to sneeze. He's going to. So we have, uh, let's see, Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus in a steel cage match. We have Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the for the title. Rhea Ripley and Raquel also for the title. Rey Mysterio Austin Theory for the U.S. title. L.A. Knight versus The Miz. <laughs> That's a segment I think you need to see. Oh, I saw it. Okay, I'm going to talk about Raw today and NXT, <laughs> but luckily for you guys, I'm going to I'm going to uh, slam them both into one segment. So oh man, look at you, it. a medley. Yeah, and then uh, and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Judgment Day, in what is called a Steel City Street Fight for the tag team titles. <laughs> and uh, no, uh, there's not going to be that uh, Gunther match with uh, Chad Gable. That's actually on TV next week is when they are doing that one. Yeah, good, because the honky-tonk man needs to come out first and get beat up, just for, you know, yeah. purposes. Man, oh, man. <laughs> Bianca Belair, according to Fightful Select, is taking time off. Possibly three months. Oh. It says here that uh, her last appearance was uh, August 18th. They attacked the knee, uh, which is storyline... And then uh, that's it. So I don't know what's going on, but hey, you know what? Sometimes people need a vacation. Could yeah. just be that. You know who's never going to get a vacation, by the way? Is Me? John Moxley. Oh, This yeah. guy's never going to get a vacation. He's going to run out of blood before he takes a vacation. Yes. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. All right, Raw and NXT real quick. We'll talk about what's important. So we had a Sami Zayn Damian Priest match, and uh, Sami Zayn and Damian Priest it was good. And uh, the story is that JD McDonough interfered. He grabbed the foot behind the ref's back of Sami. Priest hit his finish and won. So uh, simple finish because they're doing a tag team title match coming up. And uh, the other part of the story is that Priest hates JD, but JD helped Priest win. And so J.D. tried to raise his hand afterwards. Priest shoved him down, told him to get out of his business. So this storyline is continuing here. Then we had uh, a segment with Riddle and Drew setting up a match. Actually, they're doing uh, New Day and the Viking Raiders, and uh, and Riddle and Drew are going to be out there and watch. Then we had Miz coming out to cosplay L.A. Knight. This is no exaggeration when I tell you. That this was the greatest moment of the Miz's career. Yeah. And it's not even close. I mean, by <laughs> miles and miles. If you have not seen this, you should go out of your way to watch Miz's rendition of L.A. Night. It was unbelievable. And then, unfortunately, he became Miz again. And then I was like, I don't care about the match. Well, and you know what? If you poll the crowd, everybody afterwards would say, yeah, I knew that was Miz the whole time. I bet you a lot of them didn't. God. Then we had New Day and the Viking Raiders, and uh, what happened here was, and this was actually just bad camera work, uh, Drew started throwing chairs, and uh, one of them hit Xavier, okay? And the announcers claimed it was an accident, but the way they shot it, it did not look, it looked like he just threw it and whacked w Woods with it, and then, uh, and then they double-teamed Kofi, they crushed him, and they pinned him. And uh, I don't know if it was the chair spot, but I believe that Woods was hurt. So hopefully he'll be back soon. But something happened, and and, uh, and he suffered some sort of injury. Then we had an issue with Finn and Priest, and, and uh, essentially um, relayed down the law. If we don't walk out with gold on Sunday, there may have to be some changes around here. Man, it usually takes a woman to do that there. Yeah. Yeah. Gunther did a promo on the announce table. This whole segment, like, I love these guys, but the booking was so stupid. 
Gunther explains that, yes, Chad Gable beat me, but he beat me by count out. He technically got a victory, but he actually won nothing. Next week, he says, it'll be me and Chad for the Intercontinental title on Raw. But tonight, Chad Gable must face my best man, Ludwig Kaiser. So they have a match, and it's good. And they wrestle, and I don't know how long they went. Let's say just say 12 minutes. And then all of a sudden... Chad hits this big moonsault, and then he hits the chaos theory in the ring, and Giovanni Vinci just ran in for the DQ. And then, you know, Otis hit the ring, but they beat up Otis, and then Chad tried to counter on Gunther, but Gunther killed him and powerbombed him, and they left him for dead. I was like, could you have done something dumber? Like, there ain't one person on the earth that believes that Chad Gable is ending the streak of Gunther. So what you need to do is give him everything until that match. And they didn't. They beat him up and left him laying like a geek. And he couldn't even beat Ludwig Kaiser. I was baffled by this. I'm wondering when Giovanni Vinci is finally going to have enough of being treated so poorly by everybody here. I mean, there is a history Months. of Italians turning on German heels. There, There is a history for that. We had a Shinsuke segment with Seth. Seth did his promo. And then we had another Shinsuke video, which was just about as good as last week. And if you haven't seen last week's, you should watch it. And it showed Nakamura doing karate and rolling. And he said, I don't want to just defeat Seth. I want to dismantle the man. I want his wife to know. I am the reason she has to help him out of bed. I am the reason he will not be able to walk his daughter down the aisle on her wedding day. His body has betrayed him. I will destroy his back and put him out of his misery. He has no honor, no code, and no future. Damn. And so Seth starts cutting a promo on Nakamura, and Nakamura ends up jumping him from behind, lays him out, and then he whispers in his ear, I told you to watch your back. Nakamura's got to win, dude. This Nakamura is awesome. Awesome. Chompin' Bronson Reed. Chompa won with a crucifix bomb. We had Rhea coming out. And here's the, here's the thing. Like, whatever they screwed up with Gunther and Chad Gable, they actually did everything right with Rhea and Raquel. Rhea comes out. She goes, Raquel had to fake an injury to get one up on me. It'll never happen again. So, of course, Raquel comes down. She beats the hell out of Rhea. Rhea bails. Dom hits the ring. This distracts uh, Raquel. Rhea jumps her. Raquel beats her ass a second time and sends her packing. I like it. That's how you do it! Yes. And while Bianca's gone, I know it's different shows, but let's get the ball rolling on Raquel so when Bianca comes back again, you have a overload of really quality women who can go out there and thump. Then we had Becky, Zoe, Falls Count Anywhere, Tiffany Stratton watching on. They're, they're bringing Becky to NXT. They're determined to beat Dynamite in 18-34. to 34. I don't think they're going to beat them in 18-49, to 49, but at some point, Becky's going to, to NXT. But that hardcore match, and by the end, I thought this turned into a very, very good Falls Count Anywhere match. My only issue is just the rules are stupid. Like, Trish is out there. It's it's no DQ. So, like, she could just interfere. She could be 2-1 on one the entire match. But she patiently waits outside and only interferes every now and then and then waits outside again. And if you can get that out of your head, because they do it in every promotion, I mean, it ended up being a really good match. The one thing about this match, though, is that at one point, Trish starts throwing chairs into the ring. I don't know what happened, man. But she accidentally beamed Zoe right in the eye with a chair. And it was not a planned spot. Like, it kind of plays into it because you, you, as a fan, feel that, well, eventually, you know, Zoe's going to split from, from Trish. But this was a total accident. And she, like, the edge of the chair, bing, right in the head. And Zoe's practically in tears trying to play it off. I mean, that sucked. But uh, Becky thwarted them both. Hit the manhandle slam off the platform on Zoe. Got the pin. And then the show ended with Becky in tears, holding up a Bray White armband. And after the show, she cut a really nice promo on him. And yeah. But uh, there's some good stuff on that Raw. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.